Hello there and welcome. It's Morgana here today, uh, back with another demonstration. Today I will be painting for you this beautiful ancient tree garlanded with ivy. So here is the tree I am beginning with. I drew this out freehand. Uh, I don't have a reference photo I'm afraid for you today, but I will pop a link to my Patreon page below where I will be uploading an outline of this tree for download uh, if anyone would like to have a go at this one. Uh, my colours just popped up on screen there. Uh, again, I will pop a, a, uh, a list in the video description uh, of the colours I use for today's painting, plus all my equipment, paper, brushes, etc. Uh, if anybody is interested in that. Uh, but to begin today, uh, you can see I'm just using a large wash brush and I'm wetting the paper all over to begin our first layer. So I'm using very weak paint to begin with, really, really loose paint mixed with quite a lot of water because the colours I'm using are very strong. I'm beginning today with indigo and some viridian hue. It's a lovely pair of colours, uh, both are very, very intense. Indigo is very dark and the viridian is really, really bright. Uh, they both work really beautifully together, but I'm pre keeping them quite uh, muted uh, today. So all I'm doing is sweeping the paint on from the top left corner down. Uh, I'm not worrying about it looking too uh, smooth. Uh, in fact, I would quite like to keep this almost sort of streaky appearance, which is why you can see I'm putting the paint on quite loosely and uh, in lines almost, because I, I'm after the effect of these beautiful shafts of uh, morning sunlight coming down through the trees. You know, sometimes you get that if you're lucky enough to snap a photograph of those beautiful shafts of light coming down through the branches and uh, just creating this uh, wonderful, almost magical effect. As we're doing, uh, we're using wet paper for uh, wet on wet painting. Uh, you can see I'm able to move the paint around quite a lot and create these stripes uh, using the edge of the flat brush. This is 100% uh, cotton paper I'm using, so it takes the water really, really well and holds it and doesn't sort of start to, to fall apart or buckle too much. Uh, this Milford paper I'm using especially uh, really lifts quite nicely. You can see that with the edge of the flat brush, I was able to lift a little of the colour and get this lovely, almost striped, sort of streaky effect, bringing a little bit more white back into where I had already uh, painted it over. Now, of course, you could use any colours you like uh, for this painting and for this uh, particular sort of atmospheric background. Uh, I've done a similar background before using a sort of a pink and yellow combination, which was a lovely sort of uh, sort of really warm dawn uh, painting. Uh, again, you could use a more classic sort of a sky blue, cerulean blue perhaps, uh, along with uh, something like an opaque white to really give it that uh, that real sort of blast of sunlight. <laughs> Uh, lots of different variations uh, available uh, for this particular painting. However, um, I wanted something a little bit more uh, gentler, a little bit slightly moody and atmospheric uh, for this particular painting. You can also, as you can see I'm doing here, use a, a piece of tissue to lift out some of the paint that you've put on and to create these uh, pale lines just to uh, bring back a little bit of the white of the paper. Now this is a really lovely technique that I've used uh, before to uh, bring back some white into uh, paper where I've already got some paint on. Uh, you can use this if it's spreading too far because it pours the water out as well. But you can see here there is a downside. Sometimes uh, you will get little uh, scraps, little bits and bobs of tissue left behind. 
uh, and that can make marks on your work as the paint dries. So all you need to do is use, <laughs> to be a bit better at it than me, and use a, uh, a clean, dry, soft brush to really carefully and quickly just lift up these little scraps of tissue that have been left behind. If you can do this nice and quickly, the painting will continue to dry and you won't have any marks left. So now I've done that, I'm uh, beginning to put in the foreground. Here I'm using some darker paint, some richer paint, uh, and just loosely painting in what's going to be a lovely sort of uh, swell of foliage and flowers and leaves and shrubbery. And the reason we're using this lovely uh, rich paint is it's just going to uh, soften down slightly against the soft um, background that we've just put in. So we're going to get a slightly uh, soft sort of diffused edge on this first layer. And using again the indigo, the viridian, which as you can see is a, is a bold colour. And I've just put on some perylene green as well to sort of soften that viridian down and introduce that lovely green of like an ancient... Uh, an old forest kind of green. As this is the first layer, I'm not too worried about how these colours sort of sit. I just want a nice mixture of colour, a nice blend, uh, and a lovely soft sort of outline here at the base of the tree, which is why I'm now just going over with my mop brush, just with the point of it, and just uh, putting a little bit more interest into these lines. Uh, just trying to soften down the edges and put a little bit of extra detail here. Uh, some little uh, hints of uh, sort of imaginary shapes of foliage, some leaves and some sort of branches, roots and all of that sort of thing. So now I'm happy with my foreground, I'm going to add in a little bit of table salt using the salt technique uh, to create some uh, white blooms in this foreground. You can use any old cheap table salt for this, uh, it doesn't need to be posh rock salt or anything like that, just scatter it on. Ideally you want to wait until the paint is a little drier uh, than you see it here to get those uh, crisp white blooms. Uh, but here we are, this is uh, how it looks like after the paint has dried. You can see I've got a lovely scattering of uh, white detail blooms in the foreground here. Not all of these will remain, I'm going to paint over some of these, but they're going to give that lovely sort of almost magical hint of uh, some little hidden white flowers peeping through, or uh, some fireflies perhaps rising up from this, uh, this lovely bank of flowers we're going to create here. Just a really, really nice, simple little touch that I think gives a lot of atmosphere to a painting like this. So beginning with the tree, again you can see I'm using really light paint. I've watered it down quite a lot to paint in this base layer of the tree. I'm using uh, sepia and perylene green mixed together. And it gets this lovely sort of old soft green colour with that hint of uh, richness that the sepia gives it. And I'm just using my mop brush carefully to just go along the lines that I've already drawn in. Just follow those branches and I'm not worrying too much about keeping the um, paint looking too clean. This, uh, I'm going to sort of mottle it in and add uh, some soft extra little bits of paint to almost marble it really because uh, we want it to look a little textured like old bark. So you can see I'm adding a little bit more sepia, just going in and dotting it into this wet paint. And you can see it's straight away just flooding in and diffusing really nicely and we're going to get with this lovely textured Milford paper as well, 
we're going to get a, a really nice sort of uh, ancient tree bark sort of uh, texture uh, without <laughs> without too much trouble. Using the very very tip of this uh, this mop brush, I'm able to uh, fill in these thin branches as well. Of course, you can always switch to a finer brush if it's something you're more comfortable with. Uh, I'm in fact going to use a liner brush later on to just finish these branches. Uh, but for now, I'm just using this is an, a Stoda Timo synthetic mop brush. It just holds so much paint and so much water. Uh, I find it really versatile, and I really enjoy using it. So I've skipped ahead a little bit here just to show you uh, the next step in painting of the tree. I've done that branch sweeping off to the left, now I'm working on the central one of this lovely big old ancient tree. Using exactly the same technique, I'm only not showing you painting the entire tree because it was rather a long, <laughs> a long task and this video has turned out quite long anyway so I've um, I've cut a little bit out, but don't worry, you haven't missed much. It's literally exactly the same technique, going in with that really light paint, that lovely mixture of perylene green and um, the sepia. And then just as you can see, still just dotting in little darker patches here and there, just getting that lovely natural looking mottling uh, on the branch of this lovely ancient tree. You can see here using a finer brush, this is a liner brush that I'm just using to just edge uh, along this branch here and just add in a little darker detail uh, in a way that I wouldn't be able to do with the larger mop brush to just follow along uh, this left hand edge and add in a little extra sepia tone just to uh, give a little bit more shape and dimension. So here we are again, another little hop forwards. I'm just going to show you now quickly how I finish off these lovely twiggy branches with the liner brush. Just using slightly darker paint so that it just sort of drifts in and adds into the branch we've already painted. Just using that edge of the liner brush. This is a sword liner brush. Uh, it comes to a really, really fine point and carries a decent amount of paint in it. So you can just go along and just do all the ends give the tree these lovely sort of elegant long sort of twiggy fingers uh, reaching out into that painting just give that lovely little extra edge of uh, sharpness to uh, the tips of these little branches here. Uh, 
a couple of you may have noticed as well, there's a few more subtitles in this video than usual. Uh, I've been made aware that a few folks may be uh, a little bit hard of hearing, so uh, it's always handy to have uh, extra text sometimes popping up just explaining a few steps uh, if you can't quite catch the voiceover or what's being said. So um, I do hope it's not too uh, off-putting, uh, but I do hope it also uh, helps some folks out. There we are, another little jump and our tree is complete. You can see I've uh, left the branches going off into the distance. They're a slightly paler colour than the branches in the foreground. Just give our tree a little bit of extra that sense of dimension of those branches reaching out into the distance. Uh, and now I'm adding in a garland of ivy. Uh, I'm using my Matthew Palmer tree and texture brush to do this. And I've mixed up uh, a beautiful mix of the Viridian paint and the Perilene green uh, and now I'm just carefully carefully stippling it on uh, and just getting that lovely lovely range of ivy climbing up this ancient tree. I'm just going quite slowly. Uh, I've mixed up a paint that is um, it's quite runny, it's quite loose, it's not too strong because I wanted to, uh, you can do it in layers uh, if you pop the paint on and it's not strong enough, you can always wait for it to dry and then pop back over with a little bit of extra rich paint to give more dimension and to give uh, a little extra enhancement of that colour. You can see I'm just using the very edge of the texture brush here to do it on the edge of the branch uh, and those little twiggy bits on the right there. Uh, because if you so often see these ancient beautiful trees that have got their beautiful wraps of ivy climbing up the trunk, um, from a distance the trunk almost looks um, frilly <laughs> and you've got that uh, the wavering sort of the wind catches the ivy leaves and it gives it that sort of blustery uh, edge so I'm trying to make sure that the ivy um, dots sort of pop over the edge of the branch there and not just contained on the actual bulk of the tree. Of course this is very uh, this almost feels like a cheating way <laughs> to paint ivy because I'm not going in and and popping in every single individual leaf, but I think it's a really lovely technique that gives you that ivy effect. Uh, I think it's definitely one for the memory bank for, for future paintings. Uh, and I hope that it, it inspires you folks as well to try something like this, because uh, I don't know about you, but when I'm uh, out uh, on a walk and I see these lovely ancient sort of statuesque trees that you know have just been there for years and years and years, decades, possibly hundreds of years, and they've got that ivy climbing up their trunks and wrapping around the branches. Uh, it's just such a beautiful sight, especially uh, in the winter when almost all the green things are gone, but the ivy remains just beautiful. So I'm just going to carry along this ivy along a few of the branches of our lovely tree. Uh, I'm not going to go too mad, although the temptation is there, and cover it all up. I'm going to leave some of our lovely branches that we 
you know, took so long to paint in the first place. I don't want to cover them all up. Uh, I want to leave some peeping through. So um, I'm just going to be quite selective about where I take uh, our trailing ivy plant and just take it up a few of the branches but still leave some of our beautiful ancient tree poking through. Of course you can do as much or as little ivy on your painting as you like. Uh, perhaps if you're not keen on the balance of this one you can do it on the other side. Uh, really, you know, that the world is your oyster. <laughs> or your ivy leaf perhaps is a better phrase. And so here we are, I've finished off my ivy uh, using exactly the same technique as you saw me do, just following up a few more extra branches. I'm happy with how that looks. Uh, I'm happy with the amount of tree that is still uh, peeping through. So now I'm just going to add the finishing touches to the foreground, again using the texture brush. And I'm actually using uh, the same color here that I used for the ivy, uh, but a little bit richer just to overlay the foreground that we painted earlier and introduce some really loose impressions of um, a big old tangle of uh, foliage, uh, bushes, leaves, flowering plants, all that, sort of, all that sort of good stuff. And on top of the greens, I'm also adding in a little extra sepia here to uh, create some lovely darks. I'm going to introduce some indigo as well, just to get a really nice variation of light and shadow in this foreground, just to give it a uh, little bit of extra interest as well. So as well as the foliage brush, you can see I'm using the liner brush again to introduce some uh, some lines here, some interesting sort of uh, perhaps some uh, reeds or some interesting upright stems of uh, some little detailed plants here, some uh, little flowering plants or seed heads perhaps just uh, poking out of the top of this uh, this tangle here.
There we go, so I've just cut ahead a little bit again. <laughs> Otherwise uh, you're in for another half an hour of me layering up foliage with this dipple brush and uh, <laughs> nobody wants that I'm sure. You can see I've just added in a few extra sort of wispy grasses on the left hand side uh, and I'm just layering up a few more dark colours over them with the foliage brush, putting in some little wispy seed heads here. Just using uh, the sepia colour for this. Lovely. And just all you want to do at this stage is make your foreground look really natural, uh, really interesting and just sort of soft and uh, wistful really. You know, like a beautiful, like an ancient uh, mystical forest perhaps. Uh, perhaps there's fireflies lurking down there. You can see I'm leaving um, quite a bit of the salt spatter from earlier. There's little salt blooms, they're peeping through. Uh, I've kept them mostly around the base of our tree trunk. Uh, as quite often you get, you know, that's the uh, the shady spot in the forest, so you get lovely little white uh, little white bells, uh, lily of the valley, uh, snowdrops, those sorts of little delicate flowers poking through uh, around the base of a tree. So that's why I've left a lot of that, uh, a lot of those little white salt blooms peeping through uh, the darker undergrowth that I've put in with a stippling brush. And now again using the liner brush and some really light paint this time to just uh, scratch in these little extra bits of uh, extra bits of brush coming up from the uh, from around the base of the tree, keeping it quite light because it's going to be it's further in the distance than our lovely dark foreground. So this is some really pale sort of muted paint, and I'm actually just going to dab that with a tissue to take out any excess of colour. And you can see that's uh, just nestled our base of our tree even more closely uh, in the landscape, makes it look even more natural. And just to add a little bit of atmosphere, I'm just going to spatter on some extra colour. So there's a little bit of sepia that I'm spattering on here, just to give the impression of perhaps a wind blowing these lovely grasses, scattering the seeds up into the branches of our ancient tree. And now for a last touch, um, I've cracked open my opaque uh, white douache here and I'm using again my texture brush, cleaned it off uh, and I'm using it to just dab in this lovely white to uh, give us a little bit of highlights, uh, these lovely sort of blooms of, of perhaps elderflower or cow parsley poking up through the undergrowth, just to give it that little edge of extra, so a little bit of magic with these little perfect little white flowers peeping through the undergrowth. And a little bit on the ivy as well because because why not? <laughs> now all I've done as well is I've just mixed it up with um, I happen to have some lemon yellow left on my palette so I've mixed it up with the white uh, just to add a little extra flavour of colour <laughs> that really uh, pale lemon yellow I think actually really worked beautifully to just bring out the darks 
uh, bring out those lovely rich greens and blues that are already in this painting. Uh, just splatter that on there, a little bit of extra pale yellow, uh, just to bring this painting together. Um, as I was actually um, painting this in the evening, the light uh, is not fantastic, it's a little dull. Uh, this painting is um, perhaps a little brighter, a little cooler in tone than it appears here. It's uh, got a, uh, a lovely like extra bluish hint. Uh, I'm going to try and get um, a photograph <laughs> the following day uh, to show you its slightly truer colours. And there we are with the uh, finished painting, spattered on a little bit of extra lemon yellow there for some highlights. Uh, but yeah, we're all done. So this is the following day. This is the uh, sort of true colours of the painting. You can see the rich sort of bluish hues of that uh, ivy uh, of our beautiful ancient tree here. Um, I must admit, <laughs> when I drew this tree out, I was intending to, to put some foliage in the branches, but I got so carried away with the ivy that I, I did in fact forget. Uh, so perhaps <laughs> you will be seeing uh, another version of this somewhere down the line, uh, with our tree looking a little bit healthier. Um, but still, uh, I'm really, really proud of this. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope that it inspires or interests someone. Uh, so thank you very much everybody for watching. Uh, for more like this, pop over to my Patreon page for exclusive uh, video tutorials and plenty of downloadable uh, reference photos. Uh, but that's all from me today, so thank you very much everybody for watching. I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video.